morning everyone and welcome to this beautiful day the day in the Christian calendar where we celebrate the birthday of the church yes it's Pentecost now the children this week will have received through the post a craft for them to do at least I hope you have all received them I'm sure the older ones will have been able to do this quite simple task by themselves but for the younger members maybe you have needed your parents or an older brother or sister to help you put them together well, here's mine just behind me. I hope you had fun making yours. Now, pinwheels, I think are pretty cool just by themselves, but they are even better when they spin. They spin not because they have batteries that make them spin. So what makes them spin? Yes, that's right, it's the wind. And we can make the wind when we blow on them. I always remember as a child, putting them in the garden or even getting them on holiday at the beach and letting them spin in the wind. I was fascinated by them. They were lots of fun. Now today's Bible story has all of Jesus' disciples in a room when the Holy Spirit comes into the room like a big wind. The Bible says in Acts 2 verse 2, and then suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Now just like the wind makes the pinwheels do something the holy spirit made the disciples do something they were able to talk in other languages so that people could understand them they were able to talk about jesus with lots of confidence and they went and started churches just like ours now the holy spirit helped them do all that and the holy spirit is still helping christians to do things today he helps um, us believe in god and helps us when we care for the things God cares about. He is there to help and um, to do these things. Today, as we thank God for his precious gift of the Holy Spirit, may we help others hear and learn about Jesus Christ and how he left the Holy Spirit to help us on our journey of faith. And so we are going to start with a couple of great songs. And while we sing, you can wave around your pinwheels and make them move just as the Holy Spirit moves in our lives through the power of God. And then Tom Rebel is going to bring us to God in prayer. Okay. 
nothing else can bring We'll give to you our offering Celebration praise Come on and celebrate Celebrate, celebrate and sing Celebrate and sing to the King Come on and celebrate Celebrate, celebrate and sing Celebrate and sing to the King
Sadly's prayer for a Pentecost tongue. Holy Spirit of life, inflame me with the passion for the good news. Let my voice ring with hope and promise of Christ. Holy Spirit of love, immerse me in compassion and kindness. May my words bring comfort to those in need of consolation and assurance. Holy Spirit of grace, enlighten my mind and heart. Fill my speech with expressions of peace and understanding. Amen. We thank Tom for sharing in prayer time with us today. We really do have some wonderful, talented young people. Please continue to pray for them in these days of change and the uncertainty for them all as to what is actually going to happen about um, their education. They have a lot of unanswered questions with regard to the situation and we pray for the government to be able to resolve this issue well and safely. Just now we are going to listen to a beautiful piece of music chosen by songs leader Christine Saunders for today's meeting. His provision, whose beautiful words were written by John Gowans about our personal vulnerability and Ivor Bosanko wrote the music. How we need God's Holy Spirit in the many circumstances described in this song. Life may make us feel weakness, despair, bewilderment, fear, loneliness, and betrayal. Yet because of Jesus Christ and his sending of the Holy Spirit as our comforter, we have hope.
Good morning everyone. I do hope you're all keeping safe and well. I've been asked to bring you today's Bible reading, which of course is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. And the, this is entitled, The Holy Spirit Comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. We thank Adele for sharing in the scripture reading this morning. We're going to share again together with a wonderful song that speaks of the redemption found in the blood of Christ. There is power in the blood. It's a hymn which highlights that we are redeemed by the blood of Christ. The hymn was written and composed by Lewis Edgar Jones, who was born in Yates City, Illinois, on February 8, 1865. This hymn is an appreciative tribute to the sacrifice made by Jesus, given his life to redeem our souls. Now this will be followed by two testimonies. So wherever you are this morning, join with us as we sing, there is power, power, wonder work and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank you. 
and greetings on this celebration day of Pentecost. On an Easter Sunday morning in 1947, I experienced a touch from the Holy Spirit that had me walking on air for days. And suddenly, in my mind's eye, I saw the path I was to follow. All went well, but ten months later, the pathway closed quite dramatically and my vision of becoming a Salvation Army officer appeared to be over. I realised the calling was for me to be available for service in any capacity. In 1991, the Holy Spirit gave Myrtle and myself a big nudge and said, now is the time. It was his time, not mine. The in-between years had been a kind of lockdown time of preparation. Finally, my life and testimony are contained in the words of the late General Albert Oldham, Old Song Book 512, New Song Book 610. My life must be Christ's broken bread. My love is outpoured wine. A cup or fill the table spread beneath his name and sign, that other souls, refreshed and fed, may share his life through mine. My prayer was, and still is, that someone will share his life through mine. The Lord bless you. Amen. Good morning to you on this Pentecost Sunday. I feel privileged this morning to have been asked to give my testimony and I testify to the fact that I know a risen Saviour. I'm honoured to know that I'm the child of a King. And many years ago, when I was 16 in the northeast of England, I made a promise, a promise with a song. And this song is, O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. Seventy years down the line, that promise still stands. And I stand before you this morning knowing that I am in the knowledge of God, knowing that he loves me and cares for me. And this morning, I make this promise again. This time, maybe in the present tense. O oh Jesus, I will promise to serve you to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. My prayer this morning is that I shall know him deeper and I shall get to love him more strongly and I hope that he will keep me faithful. I pray that he will keep me faithful until that very end. May God bless you. We thank Envoys Bryn and Myrtle Sutton for sharing with us this morning their testimony. It is always good to hear how the Lord has spoken to us and also of his faithfulness to us throughout the years. And then just now, we are going to listen to a beautiful band arrangement now, chosen by Bandmaster Carl Saunders for today's meeting. A very appropriate piece of music entitled Fall Afresh by Andrew McCarrick. A sensitive arrangement of the well-loved hymn, Spirit of the Living God.
Well, as we said, today is Pentecost Sunday. Perhaps we would do well to remind ourselves why it is so important to us as members of the church. The Jews had a long history of keeping Pentecost, sometimes called the Festival of Weeks because it was a week of weeks, seven weeks in fact, in one day. Pentecost is 50 days after the Sabbath of the Passover. Now, historically, it had two purposes, to celebrate the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai and to present the first fruits of the barley harvest before God. It came at the right time. The weather was beautiful, travel was pleasant. No one worked on Pentecost because it was a holiday and the streets of Jerusalem were often crowded with more people than at Passover. There was a festive spirit in the air, you could say a religious party time. But this Pentecost was different from all the others. What happened on that day became the turning point of history and gave birth to the church. God used that first Pentecost to bring newness to planet Earth. Firstly, we have new power. Shortly before his ascension into heaven, Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem till they received the promised gift the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 10 days went by and they were all together in one place. Then the miracle happened. We are told in Acts 2 verses two to four that suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now everyone heard them in their own language. A few made fun of them, accusing them of being drunk. But many others who had also heard the sound of fierce wind and um, seen flaming tongues of fire were amazed, including the disciples who knew that this mighty miracle had come from God. Pentecost means a gift of new power for Christ's disciples. Secondly, we have a new message. It came from the Father, was credentialed by the Spirit and focused on the Son. Peter led into his sermon by answering his accusers. These men are not drunk, he said. This is what the prophet Joel um, wrote would happen when God poured out his Spirit on all men and women. Then he quoted King David's prediction that the Messiah would come. Our faith has its roots in the Old Testament history. It is not a fly-by-night cult founded on a Johnny-come-lately charismatic leader. Christ is at the core of Peter's Pentecost sermon. He accuses them, along with the wicked men of crucifying Jesus, whom God had accredited by miracles, wonders and signs. They are guilty of murder, but God raised him from the dead because death cannot hold him. Further, God exalted him to his own right hand in glory and power. This message of Pentecost is that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose on the third day and ascended to God. No one else can atone for our sins. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Now, in answer to their question, brothers, what shall we do? Peter gives a double command and a double promise. If we repent and are baptized, Christ will forgive our sins and give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. More than anything else, we need cleansing from our sin and power of and the power of God in our lives to help us overcome. This promise is for all whom the Lord our God will call. And the plea is for us to save ourselves from this corrupt generation. The choice is simply ours. Thirdly, we have a new community. Those who accepted his message were baptized and 3,000 were added to their number that day, we are told. Peter had made the good confession months before that we read in this, Matthew 16, verse 18. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus responded, On this rock I will build my church, 
and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. On Pentecost, his promise came true. The church was born. Church is what happens to us when we are saved from our sins and are given the gift of God's Holy Spirit. We become a part of his spiritual family, the household of God. Today, we have remembered our roots and celebrated the church's birthday. If Christ died for the church, then it must be important to him that we are part of it. Lastly, we have new purpose. We label it the Great Commission. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Luke mentions it twice, says the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And then goes on to say in Acts, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There you could see we have our marching orders. What do we say today? Happy birthday to the church. The best is yet to come. Christ promised to return for us. In the meantime, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. As we reflect on this Pentecost Sunday, let us sing together in an attitude of prayer that beautiful chorus which simply says, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Fill me anew. Spirit of the Lord, fall afresh on me. And at the end, Hilary Holtman will bring us to God's throne in prayer. So as we sing this prayer, let God reveal himself anew in your life today.
Let's pray together. Lord God, the Holy Ghost, in this accepted hour, as on the day of Pentecost, descend with all thy power. Father, may we be open and accepting to all your Holy Spirit offers each and every one of us today. That extra special gift that enables us to do more for you than we ever thought possible. We meet with one accord in our appointed place and wait the promise of our Lord, the Spirit of all grace. As we meet with you in our appointed place, our home, we are aware that we all still meet with you as your appointed people. As we have been waiting patiently during difficult times, help us to wait patiently for your Spirit to fall afresh upon us and to fill us in a new and wonderful way. The young, the old, inspire with wisdom from above and give us hearts and tongues of fire to pray and praise and love. We meet with you, Lord, people of all ages, and we praise and thank you for people who, with the help of the Holy Spirit, have been able to influence and guide us through the years. Spirit of light, explore and chase the gloom away, with luster shining more and more unto the perfect day. Lord, we are living in difficult, trying times, and yet we have seen so, so much goodness, love and hope around us. We look to the light of your Spirit to shine and uplift us all. Let us commit to our day love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. If we succeed, we will give thanks. If we fail, we will seek his grace. In and through the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Once again, we have come to the end of our morning worship. I hope you have enjoyed your time of worship and praise on the celebration day of Pentecost. Let us not only celebrate today, but each and every day, that we, like the disciples of old, may be filled with the Holy Spirit and be the fire that ignites others to know Christ more. Let us claim that gift today. Let us make that our prayer, that God will fit us for the task as he meets our every need that he will give us the strength, grace, and power to live for him each day, giving him our lives, our all right now today. So as we come to the end of our meeting today, let us join together to sing that wonderful song written by William Booth, Thou Christ of burning cleansing flame, send the fire. And once again, I would like to thank all those who contributed to this morning's meeting. I pray that the Lord will keep you all well and safe. Have a great week, take care, and may God bless you all and those you love.